Let's take a look at Goodyear Walks, Rule of Four. This is Lesson 2 of Unit 4, Part 2. When will you teach this lesson? Let's take a look at the big picture to find out. If you notice here, this is a Math 7 Accelerated lesson. It's taught during the second nine weeks. Here's Unit 4, Part 2. This Unit 4, Part 2 is only taught for Math 7 Accelerated. And you can see that Goodyear Walks, using the rule of four, is the second lesson in its one day. So if I want to know about my standards, my helpful teacher tips, and my presentation strategies, I can look at the scope and sequence and find all that information. For this course, you can see that students will have to graph proportional relationships compare proportional and non-proportional linear relationships represented in different ways. This lesson does a great job representing all four of these um, different ways of looking at an equation or real world situation. And then also creating those equations to represent those relationships. So these are standards five, seven, and 19. So for our helpful teacher tips for this lesson, Students will need to um, graph order pairs, complete a table of values for a described scenario, and write simple equations based on those verbal descriptions. Uh, for this lesson, I would recommend having yard or meter sticks because they're going to use that large grid paper. And it's, it's usually very hard to draw a straight line with just a regular ruler and keep that straight all the way throughout the line on a big sheet of paper. So as you see here, the presentation strategy, they're going to be in groups of three or four. Each student will get one student to do this lesson with. And it goes through and gives you 20 to 25 minutes for questions one through five. In order to complete question six, they're going to have to take a look at everyone else's poster. They can do that with a scoot around the class once everyone is done. You want to make sure that you don't give any more than 30 seconds to a minute to make sure that they don't start those side conversations or get distracted. And then when students return to their chart paper, then they'll do question seven. Here's just a glance at this lesson. The one thing that I would like to bring your attention to for this lesson is that when you when the students go to choose a student and do their work for that particular student the one thing i think that gets skipped or missed the most is this last sentence in the instructions the amounts listed for the below listed below for the 12 students are the sums of their pledges for each half mile so when we go to take a look at our table, we want to make sure that they're paying attention to the fact that these are all in miles. Those pledges are for half miles. So they're going to have to double those pledges in order to make this equation work. One more thing I'd like to point out that if students are going to be comparing their graphs, and that's number six, they may want to all use the same scale. If they all use different scales, it's really hard for them to see the comparison between the steepness of each graph. So what I recommend is once all the students complete their table, then lead a class discussions about minimums, maximums, also scale and increments as far as what they're going to use.